What's up everyone, my name is Will from Ghost Hack and today I'm going to teach you how I lay out all the bases in my base house future house drops. <laughs> Now today I'm not going to be creating something that is particularly like really complex and really intricate and like super professional. I'm just going to give you the overview of how I would go about making a bass drop in the sense that how I would lay out my bases and the kind of way to design it. And I'm also going to try not to go into the sound design too much because you know we do a lot of sound design videos. We have a lot of serum preset packs on our website that can kind of teach you sound design. However, I want this video to really be about the layout and the kind of theory behind how I would lay out my bases to make it sound catchy. So basically I kind of have everything I need laid out already here. I have this bass house beat right here. And then a shaker comes in right here as well as an open hi-hat. And then there's this transition. where there's more effects coming in. I have some drones and things hitting right here. Uh, this is an F sharp, so we're gonna be making it in maybe F sharp. We might lower it to F or E or something like that. As a matter of fact, I think I will lower it to F. I think that'll be a little more interesting. I like the key of F. But now I have kind of the traditional bases already pulled up that I would use here. I have this sort of pluck. which is a serum pluck from one of our packs. This right here, which is basically the same pluck, but it's lighter and only meant to use on like the kicks where the side chain would duck down the original transient from this one. This one's not being side chained. Then I have this. You have the wobble and I have a few versions of the wobble. Here's another version. And then there's this all new one. Wobbles are used a lot in bass house, these kind of FM style wobble basses. And I guess you could call this one technically a wobble as well. It's really a wobble, but what I like to do with these is just have it kind of be a higher FM bass hit. You can even go up an octave with this. And it could be very usable, but that's it's a very common thing to hear as well, just something to go and then just decay with the reverb. The next thing that I hear in a lot of bass house tracks is this sort of fidgety kind of, uh, it's kind of growly, just as hard bass. It's really just kind of a growly bass that has this interesting shape to it. And I hear this a lot in a lot of different bass house tracks. It's, it's good at keeping the rhythm. And then I have a couple of things for layering. I like to layer that with these plucks because they make really good, especially if you do harmonies with them, it tends to sound pretty good. And then this right here, I usually would play it a little lower. All this is, is a tonal layer to go under the very first hit of whatever I'm doing. Like if I use one of these wobbles, that is a pretty cool wobble, but if I layer this with it, or something like that, then it will have more tone to it and it'll sound a little more full right in the beginning, especially when, when we get into this second area right here where everything is already sounding more full. It just is a nice layer. So that's all the basics of things that I use, the pluck bases, the wobble bases, which includes those little FM bases and the sort of groovy bases that have that sort of bouncy rhythm. So those are the basics. Use your creativity, make your own stuff, but I'm just going to be making a drop using these basic things. Now, how I like to start this drop is with just an idea, just a creative idea. You know, I need, I need some kind of inspiration, some sort of creativity running through my head as far as a pattern. And what I'm thinking right now is I have this kind of plane in my head right here. Like, let me take this pluck. I have this one thing kind of plane in my head where it goes Your idea that you start off with does not have to be complicated at all. So we're gonna go ahead and we're not gonna throw this in the track yet, but I know I'm writing this in E, I'll change it to F, but I want to just create this pattern. And now we have to create a more interesting pattern right here, because this is very simple and boring. We have to kind of switch up the rhythm, so. So 
something like that. So now let's scoot these aside. So now we got a little more of a rhythmic pattern. And now I did a little fun thing right here at the end uh, when I just played it right now. And I made it like this. So now that's just a little bit of a catchy rhythm. It's almost, it sounds pretty future housey right now when you're, you have just the pluck bass going on. I'm going to add the other basses to make it more bass house, but this is why I kind of said it's a, it's kind of a future house, bass house mix. This is how I like to do it. But right now, just throwing that down there, we get this. It actually sounds pretty all right. However, you hear what I'm saying, how the side chaining will kind of take out that initial hit. I'm going to layer it with the other one next to it, but I want to see if I can make it even more interesting because this is a pretty cool rhythm, but I, I feel like it could be more interesting. This may work. This may not. I'm just going to see. Maybe I can mess around with the octaves. Something like that. So let's try this. Hmm, that's interesting. I kind of like that. All right, it's kind of coming together a little bit now. I have an idea of what I want to do, though. I like that pattern. However, I'm only going to use that in the second half of the drop because it's really interesting. Now let's just transpose this into F right here. There we go. And now we have to fill the other spaces in with other bases because there are plenty of areas in here where we can take out from this pluck and add in other things such as the beginning. What I want to do is I want to add one of those wobbles. Hmm, that wobble sounds interesting. However, for right now, right at the start, it's a little too high. I think it sounds a little too high. I want to go with the lower one. And now in this little gap right here, we can take out this pluck. And then we can add this little uh, funny bass right here. And then we can add another wobble, maybe the other one, because there's two versions of this. Or maybe now we can use this one. Yeah, I think that actually works out pretty well. So I'm just going to scoot this one aside. And then I'll take, let's see, where is it? And I'll just take this high one. I made it extra high. That delay though. Maybe it's too high. Let's take it down. Yeah, it sounds a little better. It sort of flows together better. All right, we got something going here. But as I said before, this side chaining that's happening is really ducking down this pluck bass. It doesn't actually sound very good. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to layer it with this. And then I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. Matter of fact, maybe it does hit a little hard. 
maybe we just want some a little lighter. Now what I gotta do next is I gotta add a little bit of sub. I have a separate sub here, which none of these basses have sub. The only sub you're hearing is from the kick, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that in right here. I can just go like this, this is the wob. And then add them for the plucks. All right, all the sub is added. But I want to be clear about exactly what I've done here as far as laying out the pattern is I created the idea and I put the idea down in pluck bases. Then I filled out the other spaces and now it's doing a very specific thing. It's doing a thing called call and response. And I believe Matt from Barely Alive put out a video about this recently. You should you should go watch it where he's talking about uh, call and response in context of dubstep drops. But this works the same for bass house drops as well. We have something that is kind of, uh, it's, it's almost like a musical conversation as far as calling and uh, responding. Like let's take these pluck basses for example, let's use this. This part right here would be considered the call. See when you loop it on its own, it kind of makes sense, but it sounds unfulfilled. And then this right here would be the response. And you see, if you loop that just by itself, it still technically works. It has the rhythm, but it doesn't have any kind of like catchiness to it. It's just like two notes going up and down. Only together do they make something that's actually catchy and kind of works. Together, they create this kind of pattern that's actually memorable in your head. That's why I sort of liken it to a musical conversation the way Matt did from Barely Alive. And then you have basically the same thing happening here. You just change, uh, like the call is the same. But you change up the response to add a little bit of flair to it. Now keep in mind, this wouldn't really work as the call and this wouldn't really work as the response in my opinion, because they work individually. You know what I'm saying? Like they kind of fulfill themselves on their own. You have, once you have a loop that kind of fulfills itself, then you have completed that sort of call and response. So this is the thing that keeps it catchy, you know, that makes you hum back in your head. Dun, 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 dun. You know, that'll, that'll make you remember it is that sort of response to the call. And these bases in between right here, really don't have a lot of impact on this other than just sort of adding coolness to the sounds and adding a lot of variation. It's the pluck bass that people are going to remember. So keep that in mind when you're doing this is it, it doesn't always have to have call and response, but if you have some sort of rhythm that is uh, calling and catchy and then you have a response to that with another sound or even the same sound like I'm using in this instance, it will make your drops more catchy and it will help you to create a better song. And now it's time to make the second half of all of this right here. So I'm going to make unique and we are going to make some changes here. Remember I was talking about uh, changing up the pluck bass a little bit where we can uh, make some parts go up. So now I have this, which is a little more interesting. I kind of want to incorporate this bass a little more because it is pretty cool. So I think I want to do it at the end here. And then just take out these guys. Then let me throw the bass here. All right, I think that sounds good, but I'm gonna add a pitch bend to it right there to make it a little more interesting. Also for right now, I will take out this drone because it's out of key. But now since we have that area selected, let's go ahead and modulate the pitch bend here. Uh, there's the pitch wheel and create automation clip. And now let's go in here. Here's the automation clip, there it is. Let's just go up and down. That sounds pretty good actually. All 
Right now, I actually extended these notes to last a little bit longer. Which means I'm going to do the same thing for the sub. And then we obviously have to have this one area with the little pitch fall that we did with our bass. So, so it just does a little pitch fall there. Doesn't need to be perfectly accurate. We just need to generally go down in that direction. Also, the bass sounds like it's pulsing because I added a little gross beat to add some more, some better side chain to the sub because the kick has a lot of sub. But now we can add this layer. And you can already hear the difference it makes. Even just layering it as an octave is pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead and see how this sounds as a harmony. So down one octave sounds like this. Let's go up uh, a fifth. Seven semitones. All right, that actually sounds pretty good. But now I wanna change this first hit to this hit right here. So I'm just gonna copy it and paste it and then cut this one and that'll be our little variation. And also, oh, we get to use this now. Doesn't sound that great, but let's see how it sounds in the track because maybe it'll sound better there. Yeah, I think it actually works out pretty well. It's hard to notice, but it's just a subtle thing in the background. And so now let's uh, do this right here. And now I think what we can do, we can make this unique. And now in this second half, we can take these bells that are hitting and we can actually make them a layer. So we keep them like an octave. Ah uh, yes, and now we have to end it right here. We have to bring it all to an end. Like that, that sounds pretty good. And now I do wanna edit this drone, this, because I think it can follow the pattern a little more. Let's see, where are we? It may be hard for you to hear that because it's very quiet, but I think that little pattern will go a lot better with the um, progression that we have. Let's hear it, let's give it a listen. Yeah, I think that works out a little better. It's just a subtle layer. It's it's easier it's easier to hear and like notice it when it's gone kind of thing. But we want it to be there and we want it to sound good. All right, so that kind of concludes my basic bass house drop and now you can hear the result of the basses that I have laid out. All right, guys, so that concludes this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, drop a like, comment telling us what kind of videos you would like to see in the future because we're always open to ideas. Also, do not forget to subscribe for more music production videos such as this, and I will see you in the next video. Happy producing. Yeah.